<laughs> um, next, uh, I'd like to invite, to go a little bit out of order so that it's just easier, I think, with the way that you're seated, um, Carmen Bergoy, and um, she can share with us her experiences as um, uh, belonging to the Sikh Indian community. So I'm here to provide a historic overview of the Sikh-Hindu relations in India and contributions of Sikhs to the Indian humanistic society. I cannot do it in five minutes, although I do belong to a Defense Forces uh, family too. So greetings from your Sikh friend. My name is Dr. Hamida Kaur. I'm the co-founder of the Youth Run Organization, a non-profit by the name of Sikh Kid to Kid, also known as Sikh SK to Kid. We've been working alongside the Hindu American Foundation removing misconceptions about Sikhs and Hindus respectively here on land in the US in the school systems. The history books from which um, I just wanted to tell you the uh, misconceptions. The history books from which kids are taught in the US schools have one paragraph related to Sikhism, out of which three sentences are incorrect. The first one is Sikhism is a cross between Hinduism and Islam. Second is Sikhism is an offshoot of Hinduism, and Sikhism supports militancy. I wanted to put all this up front so I can clarify my statements. I'm a Sikh by birth, and I'm proud by identity. Some of you know about Sikhs. We've grown up together, but for the other people, benefit, for the benefit of everyone, we're a very visible, distinct group of people in any way you see. Sikhs, I'm sure you've seen a neighbor with a turban or girls with long flowing hair and wearing scarves like these. And uh, you've seen them in the grocery stores, at the cash registers, you've seen them as teachers, doctors, the Prime Minister of India was the was a Sikh. Politicians, New Jersey's, uh, uh, the Attorney General is a Sikh. So there are a lot of people you might have seen and wondered why they wear these turbans. 99% of people wearing turbans in the U.S. are Sikh. Unfortunately, mistaken for the 1% who are non-Sikhs, they wear turbans. And we are found everywhere, all over the world, majority living in India. The, I'll come up with the numbers uh, just to let you know that Sikhs um, have long, unshorn hair, girls wear flats and buns, and men wear colorful turbans. All of us wear like a steel bracelet on the right wrist. Some uh, baptized Sikhs carry kirpans, a small sh a sickle shaped uh, sword, a wooden comb hidden in the Turban and also special shorts, which I hope none of you got to see. Uh, a Sikh lives by the three golden uh, rules given by Guru Nanak and practiced over generations from family to family to family, which are an uh, honest work ethic, sharing all possessions with the less, less fortunate, staying in meditation. The Sikhs are very brave, full of valor, compassion, and that is visible in their actions. We are 26 million in number, out of which 1 million live in the US. And um, Sikhs make about 1.7% of the total population of India. And 25% or more have moved out of India to all over the world. Sikhs came to America 125 years ago. Now talking about India, India takes pride in being a very vibrant democracy where tolerance is the buzzword. And in fact, everyone enjoys celebrating their own personal holidays and religion. If I wanted to have a jalsa, what we call a gathering, uh, in the middle of the road, I'm allowed to do that. Whether I'm a Sikh or any kind of religion, I was in Bombay and I could hear that everywhere. The culture is interwoven. People live together peacefully and partake in each other's life events and religions. Growing up in India, I had the opportunity to reside all over, in Maharashtra, in Delhi, Bombay, Bangalore, everywhere. I never felt homesick because we all shared similar values, the people. 
enjoy food, culture, movies, language, and there was no scarcity of houses of worship. One group could have five, every alternate home can be a place of worship. So, and I could visit those, whether it belonged to the Hindu, Jains, Buddhists, Muslims, Christians, Dalits, or Sikhs. All of them made India interesting, pluralistic, vibrant, and the largest parliamentary system of democracy. But that's not the only Let's talk about Sikhs in India. Having talked to a lot of Sikhs here and in India, good and bad happened to them. Many Sikhs rose to very high levels, like the Prime Minister, the President, the Chief Minister, the Chief of Army Staff, scientists, doctors, and businesses. But many also evoke a lot of concern and trauma. And those are people outside India and inside the entire diaspora, including those who fled persecution, persecution from the Indian government. Even though a small minority in India, a nearly 1.5% Sikhs have been the shield to all of India, being situated in the northwest border next to Pakistan, Afghanistan, Kashmir, and China. 500 years have passed, and they have always stood like a shield, protecting the borders, being the first ones to be executed, arrested, whatever it takes to save humanity. The Sikh gurus led by example. But our ninth guru was called the Hind Vichadar, which means shield of India. They gave up their head to protect the Kashmiri pundits from conversion to Islam. And following in the 10th guru, Father Jeremy lost all his four kids and gave us our identity, the unique identity that the Sikh carries. Sikhs have been a major part of the freedom struggle of India. Although numerically minority, less than 2% of the Indian population, Sikhs constituted 71% of the people who died fighting the independence struggle. This is not the end. There is more that I have to give an accurate account of history, and I'm sorry, I couldn't have done it in five minutes. Sikhs have been respected and endorsed multiple times by fellow countrymen and politicians who even made promises never to be honored. A lot of losses were incurred by the Sikhs, which inflated the Sikh sentiment. And here's a brief picture which I tried to paint in the Sikh movement. In 1947, partition happens, mass exodus, when a line is drawn through the heart of Punjab, land is divided, millions are killed and displaced. 1950, Sikhs are left out of Indian constitution. According to Article 25, which is also quoted in the magazine, Indian Sikhs, Jains, Buddhists are officially recognized as a sect of Hinduism. We heard we are part of the traditions. 1951, the new nation is forming and divisions are being made on the basis of linguistics. But Punjab state is divided further, so Sikhs are not a majority state, having a voice in the central government. 1962, China invades India. Sikhs play a major role in the struggle. 1965, in the Pak War, Sikhs again play a major role in the war against Pakistan. 1966, Punjabi, until now, the language Punjabi did not, was not even recognized out of all the languages in India. Finally, in 66, Punjabi finally recognized by the Schedule 8 of Indian Constitution as the official language of Punjab state. After 10 years of lobbying, after fighting wars and getting public endorsement because of the uh, deaths that Sikhs had to face. 1966, Punjab Reorganization Act gives River waters, agricultural Punjab, uh, river waters in agricultural Punjab to the neighboring states. It also dissected Punjab into three parts, leaving it a mere fraction of its original size. 1975 to 1982, the electoral races planned tensions between Sikhs and Hindus, killing and arresting Sikhs and the police for attested with crimes. And those crimes were ascribed to the Sikhs. 1982-83, Anantur Sajjah is a mission. Uprising of the Sikh religious leaders 
demanding minimum wage for workers all over the country, greater autonomy for all Indian states, and recognition of Sikhs as a distinct community, so we could have real uh, freedom of religion. 1981-84, Indian security forces murdered hundreds of Sikhs in fake encounters, over 100,000 ported arrests during this period. In June 1984, the Indian government commenced the Operation Blue Star, a full-scale assault on 40 Gurdwaras throughout the Punjab. Heavy military ammunition and tanks were sent into the holy shrine of the Sikhs, the Golden Temple. It was the biggest holiday that the Sikhs celebrate. The uh, very uh, conservative estimate is that 20,000 Sikhs were killed Hundreds of thousands of Sikhs were wounded inside the religious, the holiest epicenter of the Sikhs. Common people like me, I was left uh, stranded for days together, 10 days I found, unable to get home, families panicking over lost loved ones as there was no blackout. How can anyone forget this? Attacks were made on the heart to strike a blow at the spirit and the self-confidence of the Sikhs. And remember, in the, in the books in the US, we are told that Sikhs support militancy. October 31st, 1984, Indira Gandhi was assassinated by her Sikh bodyguard. In November 1984, mass organization of anti-Sikh pogroms in the aftermath. The riots were engineered to teach Sikhs a lesson. The then Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi, I quote, says, there's always tremors when a great tree falls. There was brutal disregard for Sikhs living, uh, living in the country by the government. 1990 onwards, drug epidemic has come into Punjab. 70% of youth addicted to at least one deadly drug. Both the state government and the central have not done anything to contain it. The epidemic is wiping out the youth. Sad to say, in the past, the Indian Army had 80% recruits. Now, they are not even fit, physically fit to be recruited by the Indian Army. Conditions for religious minorities, we've heard, have deteriorated. Despite their historic inequities, Sikhs have generously contributed to the Indian prosperity by being the backbone of Indian agriculture, business, defense, and an intricate part of India's pluralistic community. The people of India are fine. They're fun. They live together despite their differences, enjoying holidays and days from work or from work. School kids are really lucky. They get every religious holiday off, whichever religion it may be. That was the best thing about the diversity. My bond with India is still very strong. And I'm here because I want to tell all of us about this because it is near and dear to my heart. Many of us love songs, the movies, the culture, literature, math, and science. Personally, when I hear the national anthem, it gives me goosebumps. I stand up with my hand on my heart, feeling the love for India. It's my motherland. I was born there. However, time is the biggest healer. And being a Sikh, coming from a very high moral ground, with forgiveness, we have moved on. 25% of us have moved out of India. I understand that the Sikhs in the West have the privilege of being very vocal about the unfair treatments, but the Sikhs in India have not forgotten it. They may have forgiven and decided to live on, but that's not the way one should have to live. I take this opportunity to bring you to table to solve the problems. It's upon us to act on it without resentment. Let's bridge the gaps. Dialogue and conciliation are a must to keep in the 21st century, as said by His Holiness Dalai Lama, who profoundly admires India's secular values, and he further states, however, India must systematically address identity politics conjoined with the religion in order to protect the freedom of the religious minorities and ensure secular India thrives. Emphasizing centuries-old secular values, 
India can set an example for the world to transcend polarized integrated conflicts while advancing integrated exchanges, peace, harmony, respect, and understanding. So I, my, reading the Constitution, I have some asks from India. The true right to freedom, Sikhism, Jainism, Buddhism, even in India are independent religions. There needs to be an amendment to the Constitution. The Punjab is the motherland of all Punjabis. Why did we get divided? All Punjab is riddled with the destruction of young lives, the use of dangerous drugs. There are widow villages in Punjab. 67% of rural households are home to at least one drug addict. And now probably the neighboring states are involved too. Why had this not become a national emergency? And why place Sikhs in positions like the chief minister did, finance minister, the president and prime minister, and when in actuality, a Sikh civilian raises the voice after much desperation, there's unfair and unjust detention of Sikhs beyond constitutional limits. As I said, I have full confidence in India and our younger generation, and we can bring this to a resolution. Thank you very much, and I'm sorry to take the extra time.